talking about Mercury and Aquarius. Ideas and communication in service of something bigger. Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. It's an air sign, so it's about committing to ideas that sustain for a long time. Hey, it's Sam, and I'm talking today about Mercury in Aquarius. So, Mercury in Aquarius brings this nature of speech, curiosity, playfulness, recognition of details and how to arrange them and how to interpret them and how to speak them into the area of life that's related to things like culture and um, our common principles and purposes and things that unite us collectively rather than empower us individually, so to speak. Now, the sign of Aquarius, of course, um, you know, has those traits of wanting to be aligned with a higher purpose, with a higher cause, something that's more social, something that's less, again, individual. It's opposite the sign of Leo, which is that glory of the individual. But, again, in Aquarius, we're looking to things that are of service to something higher. And again, you can see this in, you know, when you evaluate the element, which is air, and the ruler, which is Saturn. So Saturn is about focus, commitment, staying the course, persevering through difficulty, overcoming problems. Those are the great virtues of Saturn. And expressing itself externally in this air way, air is about communication, language, culture. You can see how Aquarius gives us this awareness of a bigger picture, something bigger than just our own individual glory. And by the way, that's also what Saturn brings, is a humility. And again, it's opposite the sun, which is the glory of the individual. Saturn is opposite, which is the is, you know, which is where we become humbled. And then once the individual becomes humbled and realizes, oh, I'm not the center of everything, there is a, something bigger. There's a bigger picture, a bigger purpose. My individuality is part of a shared collective with many other individuals who are in the larger scheme, or in the overall scheme of things, just as important as me. And so we look to those things that unite us with others rather than divide us. You know, rather than it being most important that I'm right, I find it's most important that we're all right, that we all win. We all have more in common than we have in, you know, um, uh, you know separate. So there are more things that unite us than that divide us, put it that way. Um, and so looking to those things are what we find in Aquarius. So we find things like we all want to breathe clean air. We all want to drink clean water. We all want to have peace in our world. These are all larger causes. We all are afraid of death and want to know what's the afterlife. We're all, you know, in it together. So when Mercury is there, we use that curiosity, that speech, that communication skills, that understanding and that curiosity about the world to align ourselves with others, to align ourselves with these larger causes and themes, and to talk with others about them, to share with others, and to hopefully move those issues forward rather than being, um, you know, stuck in our own ways about things and just kind of using our intellect and our mind to get what we want we again look for situations where there's a win-win, where we all can win, where we all quote are in it together. So it's great for study, it's great for again um, looking at larger causes and themes in your life and so connecting with your community especially as your community usually revolves around shared interests, shared values and many times it's not necessarily big things like you know, saving the world or whatever, in a higher sense, that's what we all would like to do. But again, that's also a very high bar 
and, and, and the most elevated nature of Aquarius energy, whether we're doing it or not, we all feel like we're making a difference to some extent. But many of us fail on this level. Many of us, the community and the culture that we are a part of or that we're creating or that we're supporting might not be something that's that worthwhile at all. Now again, just to be clear, you know, it's not a judgment or anything, but let's say, or just to let you know, even things like the neighborhood, you know, like, the, well, let's just say the neighborhood. You know, the neighborhood is an Aquarius thing. We all live in a shared environment. We have different levels of these things, right? Like, for instance, I live in a condo, right? I bought a condo. There's, it's a large condo complex. There's about 500 other condo owners. We're part of a condo association. We have an HOA. So I have a relationship with them in an Aquarius way, right? I'm one individual, but my needs are subservient in that regard to everyone else's needs, and I need them to cooperate. You know, like for instance, there's a, you know, there's a no dog code in my building, right? Now, part of me would, you might think, well, that's not right. That's not nice to not allow dogs. But to, in many ways, I'm very happy that that's the case because I don't have to listen to barking dogs all the time. If you got 500 people within a close proximity to you, it's not 500, but at least let's say you know there's probably 10 or 15 apartments nearby. Whereas if there was a barking dog. I wouldn't like that if I just bought a condo, right? Now, it's not like they're, they aren't allowed. I shouldn't say that. They are allowed, but there's a whole bunch of contingencies. They have to be trained. They have to have papers. So you can buy a dog, and you can bring the dog in. But again, they have to be trained. They have to have papers. You have to even get blood test samples and stool samples, and they have to be on record with the condo because if you allow your dog to poop, on the condo complex and you don't pick it up, someone will come and analyze the poop and they will then have your dog's poop sample on file and you will be fined. And it's not cheap, it's a couple thousand dollars or something. So this is kind of an example of Mercury and Aquarius, because Mercury, all those details, right? And you see those things working in partnership, right? Um, so you can see how a lot of qualities of Mercury are quite supported in Aquarius. They're both air signs. They're both about details, right? Because air is about details. They're both about language, communication, right? So if, if, if I were to want to get a dog, I would have to conform to those regulations. And again, so all of us in, that, in the culture of our condo understand that, you know, we've sort of made a pact collectively that in order to be respectful of the bigger picture and of all the individuals because again they have this thing about the you know cleaning up the poop because if not then who wants to be walking around looking at dog poop everywhere but like many things in life we also have many different communities right and cultures like for example our friends our extended friends where we get together and hang out. Now again, it might seem like, well, that's not, you know, making the world a better place kind of thing or something. No, it's not. But what it is, is we get together for a common purpose, a collective purpose. But what's the collective purpose? Many times the collective purpose is to get together to have fun. And we go out and drink and have a good time and do all this stuff. And that's the shared purpose. But again, Many times those things have a short kind of shelf life, right? They don't last a long time. But many times people, if we don't evolve beyond just getting together in a collective spirit to have a good time, you know, like I, I got and play uh, tennis. I belong to a tennis club where I'm in a league right now. And again, we're all in that league together. There are rules. And the thing we do to get together is to play tennis, you know, and... This is the higher purpose is to, again, enjoy tennis, um, compete, get physically fit. But again, if our whole life just stays at the level of these kind of worldly, secular activities that are for a higher purpose, again, it is a higher purpose. The higher purpose is to get together and have fun, get together to enjoy life, get together to do whatever, then we don't move to the next level. And again, in Aquarius, 
we see a kind of evolution in the highest sense, all of them are Aquarius themes. And again, notice how when you're in those environments, Mercury, you know, you're speaking about things that are more collective. You're talking about larger things like playing the tennis match or the this or the that or the culture around the tennis club or something. You're kind of using your Mercury in that way. But then again, there's the next level, which is something for the world. And this can bring in our spiritual, um, you know, groups, those larger causes that I mentioned. Eventually, we, our life, most of us have something beyond just those clubs and those activities and those mundane areas of life. We have some cause that we believe in. And it usually revolves around some kind of, if not spiritual tradition, maybe scientific tradition. Of course, Aquarius also has to do with the sciences, because these are things that perpetuate the enlightenment of humanity. You know, myself as an astrologer, a lot of the things that I do, even this, is just to benefit the world. It's just me doing something that benefits everybody. And of course, I like doing it too, right? Everyone likes to do the thing or likes to see the thing that they love affecting the world and then uniting that with a lot of other people who love it too, <laughs> right? So again, this is another way that Mercury in Aquarius is quite powerful because Mercury is that speech, those ideas, that enjoyment, that fun, pleasure, um, and wanting to share those things with a lot of people who will enjoy it, which is Aquarius. So again, you know, other planets don't do so well there. You know, like if, for instance, the sun, which is the glory of our individuality, we can tend to lose that in Aquarius or other planets as well, Mars, Jupiter, for example. Mercury does really well there because Mercury is also, it's naturally a humbled, it's not a fired up kind of energy anyway. It's about cooperation and, you know, um, aligning our individuality with others and that sort of, you know, given right. Aquarius definitely also supports studying, gathering information and being curious about things like astrology and yoga and larger causes that benefit everyone, that serve everyone. It's great for teachers, it's great for your higher philosophies and principles, learning them and sharing them and being in that interplay. Now again, sometimes Aquarius is also a sign of contentiousness around those things and that's why planets like Mars, Jupiter, the Sun have a harder time in Aquarius because we bring a lot of our ego and individuality and fighting nature and fired up nature. All those planets have that potential to be really fired up about something instead of cooperating with our community and fighting together in support of something higher we might get into battles with each other about no I think this is right that's right this is right and people can get jacked up on their ego and try to figure some big thing out for themselves and then kind of assert that too much into the teaching. You know, this is why you can see in scientific communities and spiritual, you know, communities, people fighting over principles and ideas because they have a vision for something bigger and they don't want, let's say, wrong teachings to corrupt the culture and to then ripple out into the future. So again, Saturn is where we're very aware of the future, where things are leading, and Aquarius is those ideas that endure for a long time. Not just my individual ideas right now, but those ideas I have that are aligned with bigger systems and structures. So when you see arguments in, you know, spiritual or scientific communities, a lot of the time, that's also an Aquarius kind of energy where people are paying attention to what it means to bring these ideas into this body of knowledge and how that's going to affect others. So again, it takes a lot of skill to introduce maybe controversial ideas or push back against controversial or wrong ideas, especially in this day and age because there's so many of them, so many crackpot theories about anything and everything that are really corrupting the pure teachings and those and those teachers who feel like they want to sustain the teachings into the future have to push back but have to push back in a way that's gentle and that's not getting into stupid arguments and battles but that's just informing and see this is another way that Mercury in Aquarius is quite good because it's tempting to push back against everybody who wants to fight with you and argue with you because you reject their mistakes. 
right? And then people want to argue with you about it. If you can be baited into that kind of dumb argument, then that's more Mars and Sun and Jupiter where you got to win. And that's no reason to get into all that. Mercury, again, is much more flexible, not taking offense, and just wanting to give the good information to inform and to let people decide. Because the correct information and the accurate information, spoken correctly, spoken with humor and curiosity and fun and all of those kinds of things, that's what allows for movements to, you know, really take steam and really move forward, right? So, Keep this in mind as well if you notice things around you that aren't correct. Again, all kinds of political stuff that goes on, all kinds of stuff in like spiritual teachings and whatnot. Certainly in astrology, we see all kinds of things being said. There's no reason to get all fired up or jacked up about it or be baited by weird controversies or whatever. <laughs> you know, the truth wins out. It always does. So good information always wins out. And there's also this particular love of the tradition and the ability to really understand the place of the traditional knowledge, what's come before, bringing that out, and knowing that these stable, powerful, spiritual and scientific traditions have, you know, they, they will support themselves as long as the accuracy and the communication is also kept, you know, um, you know very pure and clean and done well. So these are ideas, and again, that includes, you know, political ideas or whatever it is, you know, love, love and joy and peace and beauty always win. Might not seem like it because we go through difficult times, but they do, ultimately. And so, anyway, Mercury and Sag I'm sorry, Mercury and Aquarius has a lot of those qualities that brings those qualities together um, in the spirit of a higher purpose, respect for culture, respect for the past as well as the future, in a light-hearted but intelligent way, the willingness to adjust to new information, uh, realize even when we've made a mistake and correct it, all because there's a bigger picture and not because there's this ego that needs to win or something like that. That's where the Aquarius equation can get kind of skewed.